Hey, what's up? My name is Mike Yakovlev. I'm a professional 3D artist, 2D artist sometimes as well. And today I'm gonna show you how I made this little thing. It's all started because I realized I don't have a good figure 3D model to drop in the scenes because I always see all these renders and stuff with like figures standing in them. I thought it would be nice to just have my own that I can just put in the scenes whenever I feel like it and whenever I need one. And I was hanging out with my friend and there was really nice diffuse lighting coming in. And if you photo scan stuff, you'll always be really excited when it's like a cloudy day outside because you're like, this is a perfect time to scan stuff. So let's go scanning. I had this kind of like bomber jacket. I said, put it on and just stand there and I will walk around you and do a scan of you. Because I'm doing the whole Akira thing, like I thought maybe if I retexture, recolor certain things, I can make it look like Kanada from a distance. Uh, so that was kind of like the future thinking of why I wanted him to be wearing a jacket. And also I just, you know, think it looks kind of cool. So I got a pretty good scan and here's how it looks. Uh, turned out pretty good, didn't really require a lot of cleanup. I mean, Polycam is pretty good. It's really good, I think, for organic stuff. When you're trying to scan like really flat, hard surface things, it's not so good at that. But for people, uh, I think it's like definitely good enough. So I, I wanna get a couple more, just like maybe default poses, things like that, uh, just that I can drop on scenes. If I'm doing all these big city renders, it's always cool to have a little dude standing on one of the buildings overlooking the rest of the city. Uh, and uh, let's uh, let's pop open the blend file and I'll just kind of walk you through. So this scene is a combination of my buildings that I made and also buildings from the big, medium, small Tokyo alleyway asset pack. I think that's, I think I got it right. It's hard for me to re recommend it because while Blender is free, it's great that it's free you can do everything you can make i mean i made the buildings myself so you can make all the stuff it takes time but you can do everything for free technically and make great artwork but it's kind of like a game that's free to play but then has like paid skins and add-ons and all this kind of stuff that's how blender works so if you want to get like really good artwork or if you want to have like a great asset library all this kind of stuff you're gonna have to start paying for some of that stuff. And so I've, I'm, you know, I've been buying assets for years and collecting them and making my own stuff like that. But uh, I think the big, medium, small one is is really, really good, comes with a lot of stuff, but it is pricey. That's, the, that's kind of the downside to buying assets and buying like high quality assets is that they can really be a lifesaver if you're making a scene and if you wanna make it quick and you know, just it'll, it's almost like a finished scene immediately, but costs money, so. I got it on the Black Friday sale. It was like $100 off. It's, I have to kind of, <laughs> I'm frugal, so I really have to work up work up the, uh, I have to muster myself up to, to buy them. But I'm doing a lot of cityscapes. I was doing the Akira stuff. So I said, you know, I, I justified it in that way. Like if I'm gonna be doing a lot more Akira stuff because I really want to, and I'm gonna be doing other anime stuff with other buildings, uh, this felt like, the, the best pack to buy for something like that. So that's where all of these buildings come in. Th these are the buildings that come with the pack. I mean, they're they're good. Like they are so detailed, They're the textures are insane. They're, it sounds like I'm kind of plugging it, but I'm not, you know, getting anything out of this. This is just, I'm just explaining to you as a fan. These buildings, they come in like this, just geometry, but they also have like geo node versions. And I'm not, even though they're ready to go, I'm not touching that because it's intimidating. Geo nodes is just too intimidating for me still. I, I'll get to it eventually, but not yet. Where's my person? There he is. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to do this. Like I, I did a quick Google image search for people standing on rooftops overlooking cities. That was just the basic inspiration. As soon as I saw one that I liked, I was like kind of going with that. Um, and it started with the idea of making it like really moody and foggy, like some of my most recent artworks. But then I just naturally fell back to I want to do it in EV. I want it to render fast and I want it to kind of have that Akira vibe, especially because these buildings that come with the pack. So this one, for example, is a kit bash is two of my buildings and then a couple of the parts from the building from the asset pack with some like extra antennas and things thrown on top to just give it like a very interesting silhouette. So here on the left, you can kind of see it's got a very interesting shape. It looks some looks some totally new, but these but the the artist who made these uh his name is also Mike I think it's I don't want to butcher it like Yoshimura Mike Yoshimura Mike yeah amazing artist I'll, I'll he's he's so good he's he he did all these buildings as far as I know and um he's been doing Akira style renders which is like 
I'm super down with that. Hey, man, that's I, I, the more the merrier, you know? So he's been doing that and that inspired me as well. So that's that was kind of the ultimate idea. So if we kind of look at how it's set up, I have the main character here and then the camera starts there. So if I kind of go to the beginning of the timeline, if I zoom out here, you can see how it looks. So I have the main scene, which is just getting the rooftop of this building and putting the character in there. I think this part had like rails on it and it was, this little platform was deeper down. So I did remove the rails. It had kind of, it had like these kind of rails on it. I removed those and then I went into edit mode and just grabbed this, uh, grabbed this face. And it was like down here originally, just kind of brought it up because I wanted the character to be standing. I don't want their silhouette to be clear. I didn't want there to be a ton of like building structure and like architecture. You know, it looks more epic when it's just like a person standing and there's no, <laughs> there's no safety around them. <laughs> So that's that's what I used. Uh, that's how I kind of made that setup. And then once I had that, like, you know, like this is kind of what I'm looking at here. All right, this looks good, simple. And then for the animation, it's really simple. The camera is just moving backwards. So I have the I have keyframes here where it starts and then where it ends. But then within that, for the camera settings, in the middle here, there's a bit of, of a rotation. So it's rotating up a little bit because just the way that it was going back, I felt like, at this point here, it was pointed down too much. And I wanted the camera to pull back and also reveal the whole city as you're going further back. So by the time where the camera ends is back here, you see a lot more of the city and the main character, whereas they were in the center of the frame, now they're at the bottom of the frame. So the camera is like tilting up a little bit more. As again, with some, with some of my past artwork, the buildings have movement to them. And a lot of this movement is copied over from some of the Kira stuff I've been doing. And I've just learned a ton about vertigo and the feeling of parallaxing, like all of those things, all of those, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like a feeling when you moving around an area with a lot of mega structures. So as you move, things kind of move out of the way and reveal themselves and perspectives change as you get closer to a building, you know, it like it seems to like rise or as you back up, it seems to lower and all of those kinds of things. So I really just wanted to bring that into this animation. I first put this building here and then I started putting the buildings in front of the main character. So I have these two buildings on either side. These are my buildings. And with some of the signs from the Tokyo pack added on there just for like variety and for, for world building. And I have a lot of up lighting. So I have area lights with EV. you know, lighting can be really finicky, especially with the current version. So you really have to add lights everywhere that you want there to be light. So if you look on the left here, this is a little orange light over here. This is a blue light over here. And I'm just kind of playing around with like oranges, yellows, greens, and blues. There's a very limited color palette. It, I don't know, just for me, for my personal taste, it was starting to get like too much. There's a lot of little geometrical detail so i didn't want to then bombard you with even more like colors and lights and all this kind of stuff it would it would have just started to make you lose a sense of where you were and what was what so yeah so these two buildings in the front are the biggest and then you know because of the perspective it the buildings don't all have to be the same size or to scale some of them can be bigger some of them can be smaller and some of them can be further away and made bigger and all this kind of stuff so Really, I'm just giving space to every building so that I can add lights to it. So I can put like up lighting on it or like negative values for shadows, things like that. And then I take those lights and I parent them to the building and then animate the building to move. So the lighting moves with it. So you can kind of see that these buildings all have a subtle motion to them and they all have lights that are attached to them and the lighting stays somewhat consistent. And because I'm using Bloom with Eevee, I really, like, if I want to get actual Bloom, and because everything is so big on scale, I have to make the lights really, really strong. So the light that's really back here is, like, 1 million watts or something like that. Or, yeah, I think it's 1 million. So it's super, super bright, but the way it's reflecting off of the surface, it's creating this glare, and it brings your eye into it and brings your attention to it. Uh, you really have to start increasing the light more and more as you start filling the scene with more lights because they start competing with each other. The The foreground part is my two buildings, a kit bash of my building in the alleyway, and then these two other buildings. These are just like your standard mega city Akira anime style buildings, and you can download those for free. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll leave a link to everything. Everything that I'm mentioning that is linkable, I'll have a link. I think even this pack, this one has, this, this one's like a slightly updated version of the free building pack I released. 
it's one buck it's not even that much but super good you know has rooftop stuff if you need that and then uh for the background when the camera goes backwards because the camera goes backwards i didn't want you just just to see the single building where the character is standing i want it to look like this the, the city doesn't only extend forward it also there's more behind the camera so I just took one of the buildings that I already had here. I think it's the same one that I kitbashed. Yeah, it's the same exact one that I kitbashed over here. So I just duplicated that twice over here. And because again, these buildings are so detailed on every side, you can kind of get away with duplicating them, turning them, and it looks almost like a totally different building, especially if you're only seeing really like one side of it. So back here, I have a building here. I think it's, is it the same one? No, it's a, it's a, it's a different one. And then these two, and then these two just kind of flank the camera on either side to create like a frame. And that frame really makes you, it, it fills in the, the openness on the sides, but it also makes you look uh, straight ahead. So then on the side here, they're in shadow. I have some lighting here just to kind of make it colder. So then like the stuff further away is warmer. Maybe there's like more activity and then stuff further back is colder. Maybe like it's quieter. It's, you know, just kind of using color and using light to, uh, to tell a story or to build a world out. I love that. love doing that kind of stuff. It's really, really fun. It's really subtle, but it, but it adds a lot, I think in the final experience. So yeah, so if I turn the volume back on, you'll kind of see how everything is playing together. First, it gets really kind of, but the volume is just a volume scatter node plugged into the volume slot. The anisotropy here is keyframed because, and again, this is EV, it's all just reacting to like screen space. So the way that the camera sees the volume depends on how deep the camera is within the volume cube or if it's out of the cube, all of these kinds of things. So I wasn't getting the result that I wanted. So I ended up parenting the volume cube to the camera. So the camera always stayed in the same place relative to the volume. So whatever the camera was seeing was always covered in the same level of volume. I think uh, it only really gets affected towards the back, but in the back is so like blown out with bloom, it doesn't really even matter. If I play this, you can see that this giant cube is moving because it's parented to the camera. And you can actually see, get an idea for the camera moving back and then up, like I mentioned earlier. So that seemed to kind of work out. I mean, it's kind of a temporary fix and that's how, that's really how I work. I just like, will add stuff. Like this looks cool. This lighting looks cool. This looks weird. And then I'll spend an hour just like trying ideas. Uh, with this one specifically, there was a point where I was really unhappy with it. And I started to feel like, you know, maybe I'm just not going to post this at all. Maybe I'm just going to abandon this. I don't know. It was er earlier today when I was working on it. I just felt like I was in a sour mood and it was just not working. Like, you know, when, you know, when you're making artwork and it's kind of coming together and you're kind of happy with it, but then you do one thing, you're like, maybe if I, what if I try this and you try it and then suddenly it just looks worse. And then you're like, oh. you start to not trust yourself. You start to think like, I can't experiment. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, like I don't trust my own ideas, you know, you know, just kind of, you kind of, you spiral down or I don't know if you do. I mean, I do, but I tried like moving the lighting in a way where I'm like, the lighting here could be better. The lighting, the uplighting on this building could be better. Let's try it. Tried it. It just wasn't hitting for me. And I started feeling bad. I was like, oh, you know what? F this. Like, I'm just gonna, I just, I think I, I ended up taking a break. I went out took my dog for a walk and um, just went outside, you know, breathed in the air, just try to get my mind off of it. And then kind of came back to it and was like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Like just, I went back to like, what was the point of making this was I wanted to use this render of my friend and I wanted to put it in a city scene. So that mission is accomplished. Everything else is just extra stuff. So trying not to set expectations beyond like the initial goal. So kind of like realized that and like, all right, well, you know what, this looks pretty good and still everything, everything besides this one specific part still looks good and still works. So that's kind of like kind of how I got back into it. I ended up bringing this into DaVinci Resolve, which like, you know, it's not like normally you would make a render and then bring it in Photoshop for, you know, touching it up a bit, making it more contrasty, all this kind of stuff, boosting the colors. And if you're not doing that, you should be because if you feel like your renders look gray and boring, and they have contextually all the stuff that another render has, but their render just looks more cinematic or just more powerful in some way. More likely than not, they're doing a ton of like post 
post effects on it. So bringing in Photoshop, boosting color saturation, sharpening, all of this stuff, like putting things on top, like dust particles and, and bokeh effects and all this kind of stuff. So you should definitely be doing that to your renders if you're not already. It'll make a huge difference. Uh, but the same goes for animations. If you render out animation directly from Blender, looks good. But then you bring it into something like DaVinci or Premiere or After Effects, and it starts to look a lot better. In Resolve, specifically what I did is if I go to the effects here, I gave it a glow, I gave it some fill grain, and then I gave it some uh, sharpened edges. So if I kind of zoom in here a little bit, you'll see if I disable all of them, looks good, looks good enough, but I think that the grain can sometimes give it a little bit of extra like cinematic quality. The glow just helps boost and soften some, some of the glow a little bit more than uh, what Eevee naturally provides. So put on a subtle glow. It's not super duper strong, but still there. So that does something. Then I add the film grain and I keep that. I just kind of tweak the film grain. I'm still learning it and uh, resolve how it works, but it does let you customize it a bit. I just don't want it to be super noticeable, but I still want it to be there because also it helps with like color and detail when it doesn't match or it doesn't like come in all the way. It can kind of help smooth all of that stuff out in a way. And then sharpen edges. So sharpening because I rendered it at 1080 by 1920, but um, there is a lot of like structural detail and lights and little like things catching light. So I wanted to just give it a slight sharpen to uh, crisp it back up a little bit after with all the bloom and stuff going on. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So here's the final render again. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, this I'm, I'm, I'm new to this, so I'm just, doing youtube stuff i don't even consider myself like a youtuber or whatever i'm just trying it so it, there's been some great support and it's super heartwarming seeing the support in comments uh, yeah i i really like i'm enjoying this and i like sharing my process and teaching and all this kind of stuff so i don't even know what to say <laughs> kind of a, at a loss for words it's just been really cool like I think I'm gonna do a video where I kind of talk about the YouTube thing and how that's going and what I'm thinking and all like my ideas and goals and aspirations and stuff for it. Anyway, that's that'll be a separate video. Thank you for watching and um, thank you for the awesome year. It's been a crazy year. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.